All right. Good morning and welcome to our Action Matters panel discussion. Uh, as we all know, small business community is facing uh, many challenges with the recent COVID-19 crisis. In addition to the daunting health and operational challenges, small business owners are facing unprecedented financial pressures as well. The goal of this panel discussion is to provide our community some resources to survive this crisis and empower them to thrive as the crisis subsides. We'll be breaking down the discussion into three parts. The first is what immediate actions can small business owners take today that will help them survive in the near term. The second topic we will discuss centers around near and long-term relief programs that are being implemented by our government to support individuals and small business owners. And lastly, what can we do as leaders to ensure our businesses and families come out stronger and thrive into the future? I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping items for our attendees. Um, everyone is on mute, uh, so our panelists can speak. But if you do have a question at the bottom of the screen, um, you can click on the Q&A and type in your question there in the chat feature. Or if you prefer, you can email me at jason at raincatcher.com. And I'll try and get our panelists to address some of the questions at the end. <clears throat> also, I would like to encourage everyone to please use this discussion as a resource for all small business owners. Uh, we will send you out a link uh, with uh, the recording after this. So please uh, forward it along to whoever you'd like. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists and kick off the discussion. Uh, our first panelist is my partner, Marla DiCarlo. Uh, Marla is an accomplished business consultant with more than 28 years of professional accounting experience. As the co-owner and CEO of Raincatcher, she helps business owners get their business ready to sell so they can find the best buyer and get paid the maximum value. Marla is also an accomplished speaker and has taught classes with the local SBDC and SBA, plus various lenders and banking institutions. She also has several years working in management accounting with the emphasis on scaling small business. I think one thing that you'll see throughout this panel is that all of our panelists have years of experience helping small business owners, and that's why we assembled the group we did. Our next panelist is Susan Fru. Uh, using her business coaching experience, having coached over 17 different trades to success, Susan now uses her experience to propel her family plumbing business, Sunshine Plumbing. Susan is the former International Gen General Manager of AT&T Wireless, a business coach, an instructor for SBA's natural, National Emerging Leaders Program, and a radio host of uh, coaching not just for sports on ESPN Radio in Denver. Susan also is a TEDx speaker and a national speaker to small business owners across the country. Welcome, Susan. Uh, our third panelist is Bob Rourke, uh, president and co-founder of RS Asset Management. Bob concentrates on offering high quality service and independent financial advice to clients. He specializes in addressing the individual concerns of extraordinary professionals, business owners, and retirees. Bob is also the executive producer and a host of Business Leaders Podcast, which is a fantastic podcast series helping small business owners. Welcome, Bob. Uh, our fourth panelist is Tom Francis. Uh, Tom Francis has 22 years of banking experience and is currently the senior vice president at InBank in Denver, Colorado. Of those 22 years, he has 19 years in the commercial lending arena, dealing with small business owners. His specialties include SBA 7A and 504 loans, commercial real estate loans, business acquisition financing, partner buyouts, and startup and equipment financing. Uh, Tom is gonna bring uh, a wealth of uh, experience to us in discussing uh, current SBA uh, changes that are coming down the pipeline. And last panelist um, is uh, Julian Isbicki. Uh, Julian is an attorney at the law firm Isbicki and Langer here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, they have four lawyers and two paralegals. They're located in the Denver Tech Center and were founded in 1988. The firm focuses on business purchase and sales, real estate purchases and sales and leases, and generally business law. Over the years, the firm has become the go-to firm for many business brokers, investment bankers, and SBA lenders in town and they've closed an amazing thousand business transactions in his career. His focus is on providing his services in the most efficient and cost-effective manner possible. His empathy for his clients and his ability and willingness to be creative and think outside the box enables him to be a valuable trusted advisor to his clients. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we've got a, a great group of people and uh, I think we have a wealth of knowledge for, our, um, for all of our small business owners and our attendees. So thank you all. 
Jason. All right, let's get started. Um, the first topic uh, we want to discuss, um, uh, what are some short-term actions that business owners can take now to help them with cash flow to survive the periods of being closed or periods of decreased revenue? Marla, do you want to maybe kick this one off? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, a couple things come to mind. Um, one thing in particular is to make sure that your financials are in order, um, meaning that they're accurate and reconciled um, so that you can use them to help you make decisions on what to do next. Um, now's the time to get lean and um, put a cash flow uh, spreadsheet in place, a daily cash flow spreadsheet and review costs and look at ways to reduce, you know, your overhead right now. One of the first things I did in our company is I went and looked at my software and my subscriptions. And I was really surprised how many software companies were willing to work with us. Uh, they were offering to suspend billing, you know, for 30, 60, some of them 90 days. And, um, you know, it, really surprised on the, the support I had around trying to reduce costs. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be talking about that on a Monday. Uh, so I'll stop there, but I would love everybody to join me so that we can talk about cash flow 101, but getting lean and mean and, and um, get your financials on track. Um, I'd like to add one. Uh, this is Susan Fru. Uh, some of the things that we have done as a small business is we have, as Marla said, contacting uh, people. We've been able to get all of our auto loans. We have 14 trucks at my company, and I think 11 of them are financed still. Um, we've been able to get all of those pushed out till July 17th which is going to help us exponentially. Um, also, if you have a Colorado lending source loan, they're willing to defer for 60 days just with a phone call. Most of them have just been asking for a call or you click a few buttons on the website. So Wells Fargo is doing that. Alley Finance is doing that. Um, it's a Colorado lending source, your mortgage company. So if you're concerned about that at home, everyone is offering programs. So it's going to take you some time to make the calls or to go online, but it, it's definitely doable. We cut our cash flow down to the bone and we're an essential business. So we're still working, but in order to, you know, it's still nice to have a 90 day reprieve, which you know, helps you to get yourself prepared for when this pandemic is over. How much did you save, Susan? It was staggering. <laughs> $18,000 a month. Yeah, that's wow. incredible. I think ours was right around, you know, somewhere between thirteen and 15000 with just the changes to overhead, so. Great. Any other ideas or, or feedback? I think we've got some bad feedback on my connection. Oh, oh, Julian sorry. or Bob, any any ideas or any uh, comments there? You know, on the cash flow side, I think reaching out to all your lenders one way or another, just talk to them. I've talked to a number of mine and uh, just say, what do you got in mind? And then this morning, the um, the CARE Act came out in printed format and Marla's got a copy of it. And I think there's some yet to be fleshed out pieces in the CARE Act that might be beneficial. It talks about government programs and lending and so on. And, and I don't pretend to understand all that just came out, but I think that will be coming in future days. So that might be something to look through. And Tom, you probably have gotten that in your inbox by now. So that would be what I think I would do as a step. Yeah, I have a couple, I have a couple of thoughts. So from a legal perspective, I mean, there are a lot of things that might be a problem for a small business that's having a crisis. One of those might relate to the lease. I listened to another webinar yesterday, and the suggestion was, if you're going to go to your landlord to ask for relief, to ask for a rent deferral, a delay of paying rent for a period of time, be the first person to ask, because if several tenants are going to go to the same landlord, the first tenant might get relief, and the third tenant asking might not. 
So that was interesting advice. I never really thought about that. Uh, but yeah, be first. And in a crisis, I feel like everything is negotiable. Uh, so if you're having issues and you can't pay all your bills, I think it's important to just ask for relief. I mean, whether it be from your suppliers or from your landlord, uh, in a crisis, everybody understands things are hard. And I think you just ask and you try to negotiate and maybe it's forgiveness, maybe it's just deferral, meaning it's not forgiven, but it's deferred, the payments put off to the future for a period of time to allow you to get over this, this hump and get back to a stable environment. But I think communication is the key. Yes. And fast communication is the key. It's a great point, Jillian. I think that's one of the mistakes that I see business owners make a lot of times is they are afraid of asking, you know, they're afraid of having that conversation and, and for the, you know, presenting the, presenting their situation. The thing is, is that we're all in the same um, boat right now. And um, I was, I was truly amazed how many of the vendors I talked to and Susan's shaking her head. She had the same experience. I, I couldn't believe how willing they were to work with us. I mean, it was incredible. And, and, and even some of our, um, you know, associations that I had to call, uh, you know, I think right now is the time where we really see who truly supports small business. People are watching. And that was the thing that stood out to me. Every person that I work with, I thought, okay, they are, they are the advocates of small business. They truly care about what we're going through. It, it was incredible. So to, to dovetail on what Jillian said, don't be afraid to make that phone call and don't wait. That's the worst thing you could do. Uh, make it now. Everybody's in the same position. They understand. They're going to they're gonna try to work with you. Tom, were you able to, I think if you shut off your phone and just your computer, will it work? We can try. Tom has so much information to share. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. How's the feedback? Good. Not Thanks. a problem. Uh, I think communication is the key. Uh, there's a lot of information coming out right now. The regulators are giving the banks a lot of leeway. So back to your point and back to Susan's point, call your lenders right away. Get in line first, like Julian referenced, to all of those vendors, whether it's your landlord, your, your lender, any of the software that you're paying to. Um, you'll be surprised how quickly people are reacting because we're all in this you know, together. We're, we're all in the same boat. Those are, that's great advice. Uh, back to Bob's part, the CARE Act is not finalized, but we are getting a lot more granule on the details. Um, we expect to get some more guidance on that by the end of the week, and certainly uh, information will be um, more um, finalized on how borrowers can go through and, and get some working capital to pay their employees and things of that nature. So unfortunately, we don't have any final answers, but they're making pretty good progress considering the magnitude of this, of this um, stimulus package. Great. We did get feedback from one of our attendees. Uh, they said that uh, they had asked for rent relief, rent relief from their landlord. And the landlord not only offered to hold off on rent until the doors opened, but he set up a payment plan for the months uh, that they were closed. Uh, and they don't have to pay any interest on it and they can, um, and they don't have to pay it in one sum either. So some great feedback from our attendees, uh, that, you know, that is a, an actionable item that people can take. Um, and, uh, it, it seems that people are really willing to work with the community right now. That's wonderful. Yeah. This morning I called, uh, on the storage facility note and I said, what are you guys doing? And it says, we'll take and, uh, do interest only and just delay the principal payments for six months on a phone call. Wow. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple stuff. So same thing on the farm. Yeah. So. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's great. great. Um, a little more feedback. We, uh, Wells Fargo gave one of the um, attendees uh, three months 
uh, on his home mortgage. So no, no payments for three months uh, from Wells Fargo um, wow. on his mortgage. So lots of uh, good options out there. You just have to pick up the phone and, and try uh, to see what you can get from, from your different lenders. Uh, anything, um, you know, I'd like to just touch on employees a little bit uh, while we're on this subject. Any ideas for, you know, most businesses, the largest uh, expense item is payroll. Uh, any ideas for how do you manage to keep your team intact, keep uh, employees uh, you know, working, but lower that expense? I know there's some local uh, programs that we have. Uh, does anyone have any feedback on that topic? Uh, there's a program that um, the state of Colorado has. Uh, so I don't know where everyone is. I think you're from all over the country, but um, this was set up a long time ago. It wasn't set up for this particular purpose, but it's set up to avoid layoffs in general. And everyone's states may have something similar, but in Colorado, it's called a work share program. <clears throat> so if, for example, you can no longer afford to pay an employee 40 hours a week, you can apply for work share and the government under the unemployment insurance will pay 50% of that employee's wages for up to 52 weeks. So if you have had to ratchet down your business and not completely close right now, you would be able to keep your employees on. You pay full time, you pay them 20, the state pays them 20. So I submitted my applications for that this week. We are, we are still working. However, I figured it just be preemptive, send it in anyway, get approved, get online with it. And then if you need it, it's there for you. Um, I know, I know that unemployment is working because one of our employees um, had left last year, but he got laid off from somewhere else after he'd left us. And the unemployment folks reached out to me this week. So they're definitely working. I just think that they're really overloaded. And uh, I think it's sometimes difficult for government workers to work remote because they have so many firewalls. So I think that's also part of the, the slowdown of things happening, but it seems like they're starting to pick up and everyone's uh, making the loans that they promised. Yeah. Um, the other one that I think is a great program, we're still looking into it. So I, I only know a little bit about it, but it's called, you know, it's the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, um, where you can use your federal payroll taxes um, to offset to, to reimburse yourself really for payroll and for benefits. Uh, the, the employees have to qualify for that. So for instance, if you've been quarantined um, in your home, uh, which um, in Denver, uh, well actually in Colorado we have now, um, if you've been quarantined in your home, if you have coronavirus, if you have a loved one that has coronavirus that you're taking care of um, and uh, you can apply that 100%, towards um, full salary and then also benefits. I want to say it's up to $551 a week or something. Um, and then on the child care, if you have schools that have been closed and then and, and because of the coronavirus and your kids are home, um, you can pay those employees up to two thirds of their salary. So hopefully I got that right. I'm still looking into it. I actually contacted, we use Paylocity to file our payroll taxes for us and trying to find out, you know, where our payroll taxes are at, you know, if they've already submitted them um, and then get making sure that um, like we have employees that have kids that have closed, the schools have closed. So I think that's another great resource that's immediate, something that you can use this week, you know, to help you with payroll. That's great. Thank you for the feedback there. Um, does anyone know if there's any stimulus available to self-employed or subcontractors along this topic? I know we we're talking about uh, W-2 employees. Um, is anyone familiar with anything for self-employed or subcontractors? So I know the act that I just talked about, um, you can't, it does um, help with self-employed taxes as well, but it's an income tax credit. I think Tom was going to add something. There is some language in the CARES Act that addresses self-employed. Um, 
it's it's a little vague right now uh, the the decipher the difference between wage or distributions um we're waiting for some technical clearance on that to come out with the final bill um but yeah there is some benefit to the to the they are calling it there's within the bill itself there are several subsections they're calling calling this one the paycheck protection program um but there is a component in that for self-employed people. Yeah, that's tough right now. I've actually had quite a few people um, reach out um, about, you know, being self-employed and what do you do? What do you do when you don't have a W-2 that you issue yourself? You know, you take owner draws, you know, what programs are available. Um, I think that's where we're still waiting on the government, you know, to release the stimulus act and, um, Tom, I know, um, you know, there's the disaster loan. It, I don't know how small of a business can you be to actually get money from that loan? Like common mom and pop micro businesses. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and here in Denver and Colorado, there's a couple state and city kind of programs that you can apply for as well. And I'm assuming, uh, there's several other states. Wisconsin's one of them, but it take a little time to dig into it. But I believe they all have similar programs um, for the businesses. Great. Well, well, I think that's a, a good segue into um, you know, the next topic. Is you know what are some governmental programs through the SBA or the federal stimulus package? Yet we're, we're waiting on the final package, but you know that are already approved or in consideration for approval. Um, anyone have any comments there? The one that's in play right now, Jason, is the disaster relief program, um, and that one you actually apply directly to the SBA.gov website. Um, that is a first come, first serve type of program limited on on the total dollar amount um but from a timing perspective it's probably the quickest resource through any federal government program that we have access to right now as the bill gets finalized there'll be additional subsections within the cares act that will address um you know, it's it's all across the board. The payment protection program, it, it looks a little bit more like a grant than a loan. Uh, at a high level, if you're able to keep your employees on staff or hire them back between now and June, um, the program would allow for two and a half times your payroll and other fixed costs. That would be your debt obligations. That would be your lease payments. That would be your insurance payments. Uh, you can qualify for those dollars on a, on a calculated basis. You need to certify you're going to use it for business purposes. But after June, if you're able then to prove that you have used it for business purposes, it's, it's looking like it's going to be uh, forgiven. So more of a grant versus a loan. Um, there's some other components to it, but the details aren't quite as clear. There's also some conversations about having a fourth stimulus package come through after Easter break that will look a lot uh, like the packages or, or stimulus, stimulus packages we saw in 2008, 2009, 2010. So I don't believe this current CARES package is the last stimulus that we'll see. There's more to come, hopefully. Yeah. Does, does that help um, to go a little deeper? Um, one, th one thing is, I'm sorry. One thing that's unique is nonprofits are included in this category, and typically they have not been included in any type of SBA program. Susan, you have Sorry, a question? Sorry, Susan, you were going to ask a question. I have a question for Tom that I think uh, everyone will want to hear, because um, I've been hearing this from a lot of people of the last week. How long does this take? Like the disaster loan, um, when you apply for it, like what's the turnaround? I think that's the problem. That's what everyone is so worried about. Like, what do I do tomorrow with payday? You know, that's, that's what everyone's asking. Yeah, that's, that is a great question. Um, I think from a time, 
timeline, anyone knows the disaster relief we're hearing anywhere between three to 12 weeks. Um, so it's, it's timely. Um, and the, the SBA program itself, they're trying to get the money out the door as quickly as possible, but there's a couple steps that need to happen. Um, the bill needs to be signed. We need to get guidance from the SBA, which could take anywhere from two to three weeks. Once we get the guidance, then we can actually go in and start lending under the program. Uh, I think from a, from a, a time spent perspective, go to the bank and look for that relief. Look for that forbearance for a couple months. That's going to give you the, the most immediate lift. Um, if you haven't, we're, we're providing additional lines of credits, and some banks are coming in and providing additional lines of credits for a small dollar amount, sort of to patch this current piece um, for the next couple of weeks. So the banks are getting somewhat um, creative in that manner uh, to help in the short term. This is probably a multi pronged approach in many ways. Great. Tom, any, any specific changes to the 7A business acquisition program? No, uh, not currently. We're hoping to see um, some additional um, improvements or enhancements in this potential fourth package that will come through. Um, that would look a little, a little like 100% um, guarantees to the banks who are willing to lend in, in that environment, uh, waiving of the SBA guarantee fees and things of that nature, um, but nothing concrete right, as of right now. The focus is really working on helping companies keep payroll in place, helping keep the doors open. Um, we are seeing some companies strive in this environment, and then we just rely on the traditional SBA program to help those customers at, at this time. But there will be more to come, I hope. Great. When I hear us talking about this, it just, it reminds me, you know, again, the importance of um, really scaling down and getting lean right now. Um, there's so many um, ways that you can do that, you know, and I think one of the biggest things that comes to mind is our employees, like one of the first things we did is we talked to them about a reduced schedule and, you know, that we were going to kind of slow down on marketing for a little while just to let the economy settle out and see what was going to happen. I mean, there was so much fear when this first start took place that it just seems silly to, it was hard to even have a conversation with someone, with a customer, because what are you going to tell them? <laughs> you know, now things I think we're starting to, they're starting to, um, we're having more clarity on what the future looks like, right? But um, we just immediately talked to our employees and said, hey, now's a great time to spend some time with your family. And we encourage you, please take some PTO time and we're going to reduce our schedule. And, um, you know, just help them to, to um, have some time to be with their family, but then it also helped us in the interim just to get really lean while we're waiting for some of these government programs to kick in. And um, so I just wanted to make a comment around that. Please, if you haven't already done that, take a look at your bills figure out what you can scale down. Um, it, it can be interim, you know. One small change we made is we were on the enterprise uh, plan with um, Schedule Once, which is a scheduling tool that we used. And it was really easy to just scale down to the pro version. And it saved us $30 an employee, <laughs> you know. And what they ended up doing, because they were, they were working with small business owners, is they came back to me and said, hey, Marla, if we agree to just keep your, if you'll just keep your subscription at the enterprise value, how about if we delay and suspend your billing until, um, I think they gave me July 1st. And I said, that is amazing, <laughs> wonderful, thank you. So don't be afraid again to make that phone call and start looking where you can cut back because a lot of these programs are coming out. We just have to get there. We just have to survive you know, to be able to take advantage of these programs that will help us. Great. <clears throat> um, someone just said that Constant Contact gave them uh, immediately 40% off for one year to keep their subscription. So that's incredible. Um, you know, I think that 
all vendors are willing to work, uh, you know, right now. So but again, just reach out and I'm sure you'll find some relief there. Um, speaking of relief, uh, let's just talk about tax uh, just for a few minutes. Um, I want to stay on, on pace here, but uh, can someone just talk briefly on the tax law changes that have come into place uh, in, in the past few weeks? Well, so, I mean, if it, you know, I'm sure everybody's aware that um, the federal income tax uh, returns the filing and payments have been delayed to July 15th at this point. Um, most states are conforming to that deadline as well. Um, I know that um, our governor had recently, and, and maybe it's already in place, I haven't looked this morning, but um, he was looking to extend that to July 15th as well. Uh, you don't have to file any extension. Um, that's just already in place across our country and there's no uh, penalties or interest for not making your payment, which is typically on April 15th, you now have until July 15th. So that has been extended. Great, thank, thank you, Marla. Anyone else have any comments there? This yeah, this doesn't help currently with cash flow, but they're actually talking about making some significant changes to the recapture of depreciation and accelerating some assets and things of that nature. Um, and then I, I am no CPA, so I'm going to throw that as a disclosure. Um, but they're also allowing people to go back and amend tax returns from previous years, too. So there'll be additional relief, more of a long term play on that side of things. Definitely. If you haven't spoken with your CPA uh, or your tax advisor, I would I would make that as a, a priority to understand what might be coming down the chute. Great, thanks, Tom. All right. So um, shifting gears just a little bit. Uh, we've talked about short-term things uh, that we can do, but most of the stuff we focused on has been in a financial nature, uh, but just as a, as important, you know, how do we keep our heads in the right place uh, during these challenging times uh, when they seem so overwhelming? Um, you know, I think having the right headspace is really important. Um, Bob, I know you have some great ideas around this. Um, you know, what what can we do to to, to as leaders, um, as business owners, you know, keep our heads in the game, if you will? No, it's. It for me, it's, it's pretty much a routine event in the mornings is, you know, first order of business on the top of every page looks like this and it says work the problem. And so if you can establish what the problem is, you work the problem. There was a piece somewhere in the resources that was written by a special forces guy and they were moving sandbags at the special forces course. They didn't give them a time frame, didn't tell them when it was going to quit. And it was raining. It's basically open-ended problem. And they said, just work the next five minutes. And then when you're done, work the next five minutes. And then, you know, in that next five minute piece, you kind of keep in mind to go focus on the next five, do your best every time you can do it, know why you're doing it, your purpose, you know, improvise if you have to, you know, everybody in the team's a leader, you know, and when you're done with the five minutes, do the next one. So for me, you know, that's kind of what we do here uh, for the mindset. Almost invariably, when I talk to a client in the practice, they go, how are you doing? I go like, well, I'm doing fine. I don't know about you, but, you know, and, and this is not... For most of us, it's not our first rodeo. You know, th this stuff comes and it goes. Um, you know, I think for the clients, I was talking to a client, they just laid off all of his staff, had a very successful restaurant in Memphis. And I think he laid off 50 people. And, he, and his wife has uh, glioblastoma as well. So she's in the process of leaving. And he said, I have people coming by my house all the time saying, what can I do to help? And he goes, that's kind of like a brain drain for him. I have to think up something that they can do that says, just do something simple. And so calling clients, do the Zoom calls. If you don't know how, there's a resource link somewhere on how to do Zoom. Uh, call the client. Um, and there's a book by Carol Dweck. That's in the resource piece too. It's on mindset. And think about mindset. And if you go through this period of time and you're thinking about the messaging that you're putting out on your company, uh, there's also a book in the resources, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller out of Nashville. And so you can really focus your message and I think it's all time for all of us. We're all creative entrepreneurs 
And he goes, so if this is his problem, where's the opportunity? And so I spend a great deal of my time looking for where's the opportunity amidst all the noise and just trying to take and get the noise tuned down. I mean, limit your contact with social media because that'll make you want to dig a hole in the backyard and crawl in. So, but that's, that's, you know, hopefully an inventory of thoughts. There's a bunch of that stuff on, on a resource resource page. I think that'll be available. So. Yeah. Um, if I can add to that, Jason, I think a couple of books that come to mind that I think are great books to read right now and applicable to our circumstances is um, the one thing. Uh, I love that book. <laughs> it is, it has definitely um, helped me several times in my career to stay focused on what I'm, what I'm good at. And, and, you know, so you don't get derailed. Sometimes you can have too many balls in the air. Um, the other book that I think is great to help you uh, with cash flow is profit, profit first. Um, uh, he, I'm, I'm losing the author's name right now. Does anybody, ah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I have to make a Thank you. Thank you. Um, he gives some great uh, recommendations for how to set up your bank account to be able to survive lean times. And I mean, once you put it in place, it's just something that works. So highly recommend that. And then um, the other thing, I the other book I was thinking of that helped me through the 2007 and eight, and I, I don't even know that I was a leader at that point, maybe, I don't know, but um, uh, good to great. Um, it just was, it, it hit home. It really helped to put things in perspective and helped me to refine um, skills that I use today. You know, staying positive, uh, but also being realistic. You know, you've got to take action, but you also have to not be afraid of change and um, not let the fear drive you right now. I, I think it's really um important to be gentle with yourself too. I mean, you're going to see all these people as you're comparing yourself on social media, like Mary's writing a book and this one is running a marathon in their basement. It, like it, it just seems a little overwhelming. And I would just like to encourage you that if that is not your thing right now, and you just need some gentle time to sort of process this and take a deep breath and reconnect with your family, um, in a safe way and your and your friends via video or what have you then then take that time you know and, and once you get through that time and you process however that takes you then you're ready to make the next step but don't be beating yourself up because you're seeing everyone on uh social media doing all these crazy things that, that they're doing so um I just, I can't stress that enough. You just have to process thing at your own time and use this time for connection. Even with your existing clients, you really shouldn't be trying to sell anyone anything, but you can reconnect those relationships. Hey, how are you doing? Um, what's going on with your family? How are you passing the time? You know, what games are, are your family playing? Just to really reconnect with everyone and, and take a breath. Yeah, Susan, I think you bring up a really good point that, um, you know, during these times, pivoting our communication with our customers, um, it's really important to maintain what we call brand integrity, you know, to make sure that we're staying true to who we are as a company uh, and we're putting out the right message. Um, I think all of us have gotten uh, solutions, you know, uh, quick fixes, emails, people reaching out to us on how to solve this problem for us. and that's really not the messaging we want to put out as, as a brand. And I don't think that, you know, lasting brands should be, you know, reaching out in that way. Any other ideas of how, you know, communication can be tailored in, in this time? I think it's a really important topic that we should spend a few minutes on. Uh, I, I have a, a comment or two. So I have an expression which goes, the world hears what you tell it. And for me, that means, uh, what that means for me is, in good times, our law firm does a, a ton of transactions, purchases, purchases and sales of businesses. We'll, we'll close over 100 deals a year. And so I spend a lot of time talking about that. And I have to consciously remember to remind people, if I don't say anything more, peop 
People in the community will assume that's all we do. All we do is transactions. And in good times, that may not be far off. I mean, that might be 75% of what we do. So right now in a down economy where transactions are not occurring, where they're on hold or they're dying, I'm making a specific point of emailing and talking to people and reminding them of the other things that we've done, in my case, over a course of a 40 year legal career, that we do other things. So it's important to communicate uh, what it is you do and make sure people, you know, if, if, you're, if you're mostly doing one thing and now in this time period, it makes sense to, to pivot and you're gonna focus on a different set of skills or deliverables within what you do, you need to communicate that to people because the world's going to remember what you said before the downturn about what you did and maybe now you're in a different place and your goods or your services have changed and you need to communicate that so people are up to date about the full range of things you can do for them now. What I'm finding in talking to clients is there's some level of fear about the unknown and framing when's all this end, you know, and I think just having a normal conversation. I love Zoom simply because they can see that you don't have sweat on your brow and you're still kind of, you know, no sucking chest wounds. So you're fine and you go, we're going to be fine. Is there anything you need? How can I take in, you know, do you have an elderly person? You know, we have a fair quantity of older clients and a lot of them are isolated right now. And so we've got an actual call regimen with Zoom where we're calling all the seniors and going like, what's up? You know, happy birthday. We had a couple of had birthdays this morning. And so trying to inject that level of normalcy. And if you're all freaked out, get unfreaked out before you call your client for sure, because that doesn't help. And as you talk to them, they may start sharing with some of the problems. And maybe there's a solution that your business can take and pivot toward down the road, maybe. But, you know, my sense is just to over communicate in the tough times. And, you know, when it's all good times, they don't really need to hear from you that much. So that sounds simple, but that's what we're doing. Yeah, one of the first things we did um, is we went ahead and reached out to every one of our customers um, just to nothing more than just a touch point of, how are you feeling? And then asking them, is there anything that we can do? Um, because I agree right now, this is where we need to come together. You know, this is where the small business community needs to support each other. We're strong, strong people. Not everybody can become an entrepreneur. Not everybody can have a small business. And so this is our opportunity to show the world how we're gonna survive and how we're gonna to come together as a community and how we're gonna support each other. And so we're doing the same thing, you know, um, in, in um, our business that we would do personally, you know, with our neighbors is just offer help where we can. That's one of the reasons why we're doing this panel. We just wanted to provide some insight. This may not be for everyone. You know, there may be information we're talking about that you already know, but I can, I can assure you if you spend time to just think about a couple of small business owners that you know that could really find value and just, I don't know, just hearing human connection, you know, or something that one of us have said, pass it along. That's how we're going to stay together and that's how we're going to survive this. And that's how you're going to keep brand integrity. <laughs> you know, from the podcast platform, it's, I've been doing them for a while and I interview business owners. It's probably the most unique platform to get to know people. And for the business owners that have been kind of dodging around the issue, should I have my own uh, channel or my own voice or my own radio station podcast endures and it might be an, a mechanism where you'll have some clients or people that are just really doing very well you know they've got an insight they've got a character they've got something that's really beneficial that you think uh, is part of the message you'd like to get out I mean it's as simple as getting on zoom and recording the call and putting it on your website uh, you could do a series of those and start sharing them with the community or sharing with your clients. You know, how are you doing? What's succeeding? What are you thinking? What technique did you use? What did you do to refinance? You know, any of those things. What are you doing for client acquisition? You used to be a bricks and mortar. Now you're shut down. You know, any number of those things you could do on the interview format. And I think when you talk to a business owner and says, tell me about you and your business, um, most people are really flattered that you'll take the time and you're interested enough to do it. 
the barrier to doing an entry, there's a guy named Pat Flynn, Smart Passive Income. Uh, I don't have any affiliation with him, but he's got a free uh, podcast course that you can take and look through and determine if it's something you want to do. Uh, if, you, if you're inclined to do it, and you can reach out to me and I'll walk you through what I do. And it's, you know, the first podcast you do isn't going to be as good as the 10th. And the 10th will be better and the 20th will be better than the 10th and so on. But I would urge you to consider that as a mechanism to reach out to your client base and talk to them. And by recording it, they are flattered and it's important and it's memorialized. So just a thought. Susan, you have some incredible um, stories behind brand, right? The puffer fish effect, your book. Do you have anything? <laughs> You know, um, I have been making for a plumbing company the last two weeks, a series of videos, short videos, about a minute or less. And I'm not trying to sell anyone anything. I am just trying to connect and give helpful tips. And the response of my videos have been massive. I'm getting thousands of views on them. So I'm using Hootsuite, I'm posting uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, both business and personal. And I'm just trying to be in, I'm just trying to be helpful, right? So if there's anything that you can do to do that and get the word out that you want to help without trying to make an offer or anything like that, I think that's, that's something that's powerful. With regard to the podcasting, I don't personally have a podcast, but I did have a radio show for a really long time. And something that I did, it was a lead generator for me. So I would go to the Denver Business Journal and every city has a business journal and they rank the top 10 businesses of the year and in a bunch of different categories. So I would start at the bottom and I would call all of those people and ask them for an interview on my show. And then as we were sort of wrapping up and with the shows in the can, I would say, you know, I could probably help you to get higher up on that list if we work together and I was your coach. So uh, it ended up being a massive lead generator for me. So that could be something else that you do with your podcast. You don't want to do any selling, but it could open a conversation later where they may even ask you, hey, can I work with you more? And that's, of course, the best way to get a client when they're asking you. Yeah. You know, I think um, when it, for anyone that works with small business owners, whether, you know, whatever that is, um, it, you're going to have valuable advice and experience that is different than anyone else around you. And I think sometimes we, we, we take that for granted. I, I know I do. I sometimes forget that I have experiences that I can share and I can help others, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this today. Right. But if you, if you, you know, just think about ways that you can support small business owners, um, you know, do a podcast, contact Bob to get on hit one of his podcasts. He does it for free and, you know, see if, see if there's anything of value that you can add to the small business community. Um, go online to LinkedIn. If there's some tip or trick that you used, I shouldn't say tip. I didn't mean trick tip or tool that you used in the past to help you share that right now, I think is again, where it may seem so small, <laughs> but it could be just, extremely valuable to someone that hasn't been through the experiences that you've been through. So that's another thing I think that's really important at this time in need. That's I great. Think Thank Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, thanks, Marla um, and, and everyone else. I, I think those are great uh, suggestions. Um, it, it is important that we don't come across as salesy and having a, a, a solution for everybody. Um, but the challenge is everyone needs to generate revenue too. So it's a fine line between providing service and taking advantage of people in this time. So thanks for your insight there. Um, you all are great, you know, leaders in your organization. Um, you know, in this time, do you have any suggestions on um, ways that, you know, people can support their leadership teams or lead by example um, to really, you know, help their teams and help their really anyone and their families get through these times. Or any resources that you would suggest. 
Um, I, I'll take a stab at that. And we have uh, 15 families that we support here for the most part. And we've just done really great job of over communicating. We usually have a weekly face-to-face -face meeting and we moved that to a Zoom meeting and we had to get all of our employees to put it on their iPhones and their, and their iPads. And we started doing that now more frequently and everyone is really responding to it. We've also started sending our employees lunch and paying for it and doing some things like that just to sort of make the situation a little bit easier and asking them if they have any at-risk people at home because we want to be very, very careful uh, with that situation, which is not something that we'd normally ask, you know, about their home, home life. But that is something that we are taking into consideration right now. Um, I, I would recommend just to um, celebrate the victories, no matter how small they are. You know, it's important that um, we feel success we, it, it, to the point that we made with social media. You go online and depending on what you're reading, you know, you feel worse than before you started, before you started reading through the, the, the feed. So I think any time that you can share uh, personally, professionally, any victories, that's really important. And then the last thing I would add is embrace change. It's hard for many to do that, um, but we are in a changing environment. And so, um, you know, figure out how to uh, get yourself centered so that fear is not driving you. I said that before. And just, um, you know, read read uh, uh, blogs, books on how to embrace that change and, and make it a part of your life right now in the interim. I, I think one of the keys is over communicating, which we've talked about a lot uh, on this uh, session. Uh, as an organization, we started having um, daily calls in the morning uh, well before we had closures just to talk about some of those things and then also provided an email that uh, our employees could email into with personal questions or topics or personal help that they may need. They didn't want the, the entire organization to hear about. So bringing those concerns, not only for our clients, but also for our employees and how can we help them if they do need help and encourage them to speak up and encourage them to communicate with us just so that we can all get through this because we've touched on this but if if you as the leader or the business owner are, are mentally struggling that's going to filter through through your entire organization um, and so pulling back and finding a way to reset yourself and and get your compass realigned um, is really important not only to be productive but so that your team members can feed off of that um, and, and staying positive, while as hard as it is, it's very, very important. Um, that's one. Of, those are some of the things we've been doing internally. Those are great suggestions, Tom. Uh, we have just a few more minutes. Um, uh, we're going to do just a quick Q and A. If anyone has any of the attendees have any questions, uh, please uh, type them in now. Uh, I've got one more question for the panelists, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the Q&As if they come in, if there's anything else that uh, anyone would like to add. Um, so we've talked a lot about surviving um, and what business owners can, can do to survive, but there, I think there is a lot of opportunity uh, in this. Um, does anyone have any kind of parting thoughts on ways that business owners can set, them up, set themselves up for success? Um, you know, any opportunities out there or any things that y'all have been thinking about uh, as, as we've kind of emerged out of this, uh, this crisis? Well, I, I'm hopeful the webinars next week that we are doing will, will be valuable. Um, each one of us are doing a webinar in our specialized field on how-tos, um, tools, resources, uh, and I think that's where we can get a little bit more into the detail, you know, of how to do things. I know um, in my presentation, I'm going to go over, um, you know, how you get your financials set up so that you, it's a useful tool so that you can understand the story. And then I'm actually going to show you how you can set up a daily cash flow uh, that I use to mentor many business owners as a CFO 
um, through the 2008 you know, to 2016 um, timeframe, and then um, you know, I'm hoping that will help. So. You know, from my perspective, you know, I've had, um, had a client pass away a week ago and the family's distraught and you go through and go, you know, let me know what you need. You know, if I need to take them somewhere, go somewhere, it really doesn't matter. Uh, there's a guy named Wim Hoff. He's known as the Iceman. He talks about a breathing treatment or breathing regimen that you can do. It'll actually change the pH of your blood if you do it properly, which really takes and settles you down. You know, I would lean into my rituals. Uh, I'm a podcast consumer. Uh, I would find some really good podcasts that talk about tips and techniques and perhaps other successful business people, you know, uh, whether it's Smart Passive Income, Tim Ferriss, um, um, Entrepreneur on Fire with uh, John Lee Dumas, any of those that you consume to make sure that you're feeding something hopeful between your ears, you know, preserving that mindset, I think is extremely important. Um, you know, celebrate checking off something on your list. You know, if you have to break your day down into 15 to 30 minute increments and you kind of go, I, I didn't get the first 30, but I got the second 30. That's a win and go stomp around, have a cup of coffee and, you know, and, and get some fresh air, run up down the stairwell or whatever you got to do, pet a dog. And, you know, for me, uh, for what I find most remarkable and it sounds really pedestrian is, boy, the FaceTime, the in-person Zoom call, how are you doing? We're still here and, you know, nobody ran us over and we're good to go and, uh, this is just another thing, and we'll get on the other side and, and really take advantage of the opportunities on the other side. And I think people, perhaps when you're in the midst, you're looking now, then I think, what kind of opportunity is going to shape up on the other side, and how do I plan for it? So that's pretty much how I conduct myself daily. And some days I get more of the 30-minute pieces than others, but some's better than none, and that's kind of how we go. So I hope that's somewhat helpful. Very helpful, Bob. <clears throat> Anyone else with parting thoughts? I think it's important to have a network. I mean, a lot of business owners are just within their own companies. And if they're the owner, they might not have someone else at their level within the company. So I think it's helpful to have people outside of your company who you can talk to. Maybe they do what you do in other places. Uh, maybe at some level, they could competitors of yours. I, as a lawyer, I have a whole network of lawyers who I just, well, at one level, they're my competitors, but I really don't treat them as competitors. I treat them as colleagues and people we share ideas with and we try to share resources with. And it's helpful to have people to talk to who are, about, who are going through exactly the same thing that you're going through and share thoughts and how, you know, what are you doing to get through this? Here's what we're doing. Uh, I th it's really helpful to have people to talk to who can understand what you're going through and can provide advice and support and you can support them as well. Great. I think that's some great advice, Julian. Uh, thank you. Tom, did you have? Jason, can I? Yeah, you know, I don't, I was reluctant to bring this up, but be careful uh, out there. They're the scam artists are, are realigned and rejuvenated. Uh, they kind of see blood in the water right now. So just be very, very careful on um, anything that looks suspicious, pretend it's suspicious, verify it. Um, you know, if you see any of these quick relief um, financing opportunities, uh, just please do your due diligence and make sure that it's a legitimate um, uh, product or service that's out there. Uh, unfortunately, but there are just a lot of people who are going to take advantage of some folks out there right now. So we're seeing it uh, on the banking side a lot. That's great advice. Thank you. Well, um, we're about out of time. I uh, want to thank each and every one of you for uh, taking your time and, and speaking. Uh, I think this was a great, uh, helpful uh, panel discussion. Um, what we're going to be doing is, uh, as we mentioned in our invite to all of our attendees, uh, this panel discussion is just the first part of a webinar series, as Marla mentioned. So each one of our panelists next week will be breaking out and doing uh, presentations on various topics. So we'll be sending out an email after this uh, so you can sign up for those uh, presentations. Um, also, please forward those to your network. 
Um, Monday, Marla will be talking on the power of your financials, cash flow 101. Uh, Tuesday, Susan Fru will be, uh, her topic is leading through the rain. Uh, she always has wonderful uh, uh, topics and, and uh, titles, so I like that, Susan. Um, Bob Rourke uh, will be tools and tactics. Uh, Julian uh, and an, another attorney with his firm, Ty McKinstry, will be doing how small businesses can address legal issues in the time of the coronavirus. And hopefully by Friday, Tom will have uh, some more information on the packages that are being released. And uh, he'll be doing banking in a pandemic. What does this look like? So watch for an email from us, uh, Raincatcher, to sign up for these webinars. And that about does it for today. Uh, we appreciate the panelists' time and the wealth of knowledge. We also want to thank everyone, uh, all of our attendees, for joining us and participating. These are definitely challenging times, and you know we know we're going to be able to get through them. Uh, but we need to stay connected with our small business community, and we need to support each other. So, thank you for your time today. And with that, uh, we'll end. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.